Hey friends, this is your boy Pastor Curtis coming again, bringing you a live word this Sunday morning from K1. Listen, I wanted to take a moment to tell you that church, although we've been having a great time online, church has not been the same without you in the building. I preach on Sunday mornings, on Wednesday nights, without you all being present in person. I want to encourage you right now, as you are already invite liking and sharing and telling me where you're from and who you are, I want you all to know that from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate your faithfulness to the online services that we have to conduct during these most difficult times. Your faithfulness and your uh, continued prayer and support for me and the ministry will never, ever go unnoticed. So come on, friends, invite someone in right now. We're getting ready to deliver the last Sunday of the month message on this series behind me, Triggers. And I promise you, you are going to be blessed. So come on, come on, tell me where you're coming from. I see people announcing where they're coming from. Come on, Connecticut is in the house. Yes, come on, y'all. Come on, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. I love to say that because I understand that so many people wish that they had another day like you and I have on this Sunday morning. Truly, we are blessed to be in the land of the living. Friends, I am so delighted that the Lord has granted me this opportunity to share with you all. I want to begin this morning with a simple prayer. Can we pray? As you continue to invite, like and share, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have granted us to worship together, to work, walk in the word together. I pray now in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would decrease me and increase you. Let your anointing flow. Father, I pray now in Jesus' name that if there be any sick viewing, if there be any sick that's on this Facebook Live this Sunday morning, that you'll move by your spirit. Touch them where they are. Heal, set free, and deliver. Save, sanctify. Fill us with your precious Holy Ghost. Today, God, I thank you for meeting every need that is here, that is present on this Facebook Live. Father, I decree and I declare that signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow us from this day forward. We give you all the honor, we give you all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, I am so glad again that I get to share a message that the Lord has put on my heart to share with you. I tried to save this message uh, for this last Sunday because I just felt like um, we could benefit if I gave y'all a recap, and not just a recap. But if I can let you guys see that no matter how holy or anointed you were, as we talked about on Wednesday night in Bible class, where Paul says, uh, he said that there's no good thing in his flesh. He said every time he tried to do good, evil presented itself, that which he would not do. So Paul was saying how he had a struggle in his flesh, but in his mind he knew that it was the wrong thing to do. So he had this battle going on. And there's two people in the Bible, when you mention the Bible, that most people know. The first person, of course, is Jesus. Everyone knows Jesus. And if not, we have a problem, y'all. Come on, somebody talk to me on Facebook Live this Sunday morning. If you don't know Jesus, not that we're judging you, but the first person you need to get to know outside of God is Jesus in the Bible. And once you get to know Jesus, you'll understand that he is the responsibility. He is the responsible one for the New Testament. Yes, Paul wrote a majority of the books and Luke wrote majority of the words. However, the premise of what the New Testament is about is Jesus. But then when you get to the Old Testament, the premises of what the New Te Old Testament is about is about Moses. Moses writes the five, first five books of the Bible, which are called the Torah. He writes these books. And when he writes these books, he's inspired by God to do so because he was not present during most of it. However, he gives us the instructions to the law. He gives us the instructions to how it is that uh, they were supposed to live in a time, what life looked like, and all of these things. So if there's anybody that can help us understand how to deal with triggers, it would be our boy Moses. Moses goes into depth in Genesis to tell us about the creation. Then he goes in Exodus and shows how God is the deliverer. Then he goes into Leviticus and he teaches us about the law. And then he goes into Deuteron Deuteronomy and he shows us about how God can make a way out. Watch this. But then when he gets the numbers, we start to see. We start to see that Moses is just like you and I. Somebody say Moses is just like you and I. I'm going to need about 20 of y'all on this Sunday morning on Facebook Live to talk back to your boy and say Moses is just like you and I. 
truth of the matter is, Moses' story is probably more unique than we think it is. Uniquely uh, 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 similar to us or similar to ours than we think. Some of us think that these Bible people or these Bible heroes or the people in the Bible do not have relatable stories. When in all actuality, many of them have stories that are so similar to ours. And that's what causes me to stumble upon this, this message today. And you'll find me in Numbers chapter 20. I'm going to pull from three verse friends, three verses this morning. And after I pull from these three verses, I'm going to begin to elaborate just a little bit. And I'm going to try at the end to tie all of the messages, if I can, if I have enough time, if time permits. If not, I can do it at another time. Maybe later on on the premiere, I can turn into a live this Sunday evening. But we'll see. But for the most, mark, most part, I want you to catch what Moses is giving us. Because this meat that is falling off this bone will change our life forever. So he says in, he says in Numbers chapter 20, Verse number 10, he said, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. Now, it's important that I pause here for a moment because you have to go back to verse number eight and understand that Moses has a word from God. Moses is dealing with some people. He's dealing with the children of Israel. But these people that he's dealing with, they're ungrateful. They're unappreciative. They say to themselves, and y'all know how it is to have some people in your life. Like children that are ungrateful or unappreciative, like life partners, husbands, wives, friends, colleagues, co-workers, you know, some saints you go to church with. They're just ungrateful no matter how much you do for them, no matter how many ways you done help them. They just find a way to be or show themselves to be ungrateful. Moses is encountering this with the children of Israel. No matter how many things God has done for them. They still find a way to complain and murmur and think that they were better off before God's intervention, before God stepped in. Do you, anybody on Facebook this Sunday morning, can you relate to what Pastor C is saying to you? You have people in your life who think that they were better off before they started trusting God. Uh, Moses is, is in a dilemma here because the, the children of Israel are saying, did you really bring us all this way to let us die like this? Did, did you really let us uh, come all this way for us to be thirsty and, and, and to watch the enemy see us suffer? Did you really do this to us, Moses? And it tells us in verse number 8 and 9 that Moses and Aaron fall on their face and pray. And that catches up to verse number 10 because now Moses has gotten his answer from God. God says, Moses, what I need you to do is I need you to go to the rock and speak to the rock. And I'm going to cause water to come forth, to spring forth out of the rock. Oh, God, I wish somebody in here understood that there's a word in your mouth that's getting ready to cause some water. Watch this water, the spirit. The spirit is getting ready to release something. Watch this for the people who are following you, who are in need. But you have to be careful. Watch this. I'm getting ready to go somewhere. You have to be careful not to allow the people who are ungrateful to make you miss your assignment opportunity to please God. So he tells Moses here, he says, Moses, Aaron, I need y'all to be obedient. He says, I need you to go to the rock. Let's go back to verse number 10. I caught y'all up where we're at now. He goes back to, we go back to verse number 10 and he says now, he says, go to the rock and say unto them, here now ye rebels, must we fetch water out of this rock? Moses lift up his hand. Oh God, oh God. And with his rod, he smote the rock twice and water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beast also. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believe me not, although the war came forth, Moses was not obedient. Although the war came forth and the people's needs were met, Moses was not obedient. And you would think that sometimes if we get the result we're seeking, then God would be pleased. Oh, God, somebody on Facebook this Sunday morning need to talk back to your boy this morning and say, although I'm seeing results, it does not mean that God is pleased. God calls Moses, his boy, he calls Aaron, he says, listen, something's wrong here, Moses, because you did something I did not tell you to do. Let's read this. Let's read verse 12. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because ye believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Watch this. Because Moses now, instead of 
speaking to the rock, decided to smoke the rock twice. Uh, God now is angry. But Moses, if he was here today, and I want to preach to about 30 of y'all on Facebook this morning, this last Sunday of the month, that would talk back to me and say, Pastor, see, I can relate to Moses. Because if Moses was here, watch this, check this out. Look what our boy Moses would say. Moses said, I'm upset. I need somebody to type that right there. I'm going to give you all about 30 seconds. I need everybody that can relate to Moses when you are trying to do everything you can do. You are trying to be obedient. You are trying to be the leader. You are trying to be the better person. But yet and still, it seems like God is keeping the very thing that you have been praying for back from you while he's rewarding the ungrateful folks on the side of you. I need somebody to shout to your boy, shout back to your boy this morning and say, I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm upset. Yes, Pastor C, I'm upset. I'm upset. Yes, come on. I need everybody. Everybody. Yep. Uh-huh. Facebook Live. Come on. Uh-huh. I see about 20 y'all typing it right now. I'm upset. 30. Yep. 40. I see it. The numbers are rising. I'm upset. I'm upset. So I I I keep writing it, but I studied and I looked up what the word upset means. This is my first point, and it's really a definition. But but I looked it up and to be upset, watch this, to be upset is in one definition it is to be emotionally uh, emotionally disturbed so Moses now finds himself emotionally disturbed but if we don't understand the context and why we find Moses at this place then we'll miss the textual importance of what's being said on this Sunday morning Moses now is emotionally disturbed, watch this, because of how the people around him are conducting themselves. Sometimes you have to be careful because the people around you can cause you to become emotionally disturbed. But what if I was to submit to you today that Moses' issue with his emotions did not start when the children of Israel started acting crazy? And if I had to say that to you today, then I would have to follow it up by telling you that your emotional issues didn't start now. These emotional issues probably started way back yonder, way back uh, years ago when you did not even know what the enemy was trying to do with your life. So let's look at this. Moses now, he's born, but when he's born, Pharaoh is trying to have all the, uh, they're trying to have all the kids killed. All the children uh, are underneath a certain age. They're trying to get rid of them. They're trying to kill them. You know, the same thing they did to Jesus. And when Jesus was born, they're doing to Moses. Isn't it amazing? Two great leaders. We have this opposition of trying to kill all the male children. So, so instead of Moses, watch this, being killed and slaughtered as a child, his mother puts him in a basket and she ships him up the river. Because she understands that if I get rid of him, maybe someone up the river can get him and make sure that he survives. Oh, God. If I had time, I preached it before. My sister knows. And I know she's watching this Sunday morning. Watch this. If I had, thank you, Elders. I thank you. Thank you, Elders. Because you're going to help me preach this one day. Watch this. Moses is really a basket case. Oh, God. When we look at that terminology, basket case, we talk about someone having mental issues. When we call them a basket case, uh, it, 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 it is, there's a phrase when we call people basket case because they don't have them all emotionally or mentally. So Moses symbolically is put in a basket, watch this, and he's shipped up the river. So now he has no one to guard him up the river. He's going past. We don't know what's in the water, but Moses is going up all the river by himself as a, as a baby. He watched this and he just so happens to fall into the hands of Pharaoh's daughter. Oh, God. I wish somebody understood that God is getting ready to have you just fall into places and fall into positions that you didn't even ask for. Oh, God. If I had a screamer on Facebook Live, somebody on Facebook Live would scream about that because what you don't understand is God has already prepared your way. Oh, God. I need somebody to talk back to your boy this Sunday morning and say, God has already prepared my way. So Moses is now, he's dealing with some childhood scars. He's dealing with some childhood issues because he was placed in a basket. He was sent up the Nile. When he got up to the Nile, he was picked up by Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter, watch this, she takes care of him, but she finds out that she cannot nurse him, so she hires a slave woman to nurse him. 
Oh, God, what a coincidence, friends of Facebook Live this Sunday morning. What a coincidence. The person that she hires to take care of Moses, I'm going to give you a little backdrop before I tell you why he's upset. The person she hires to take care of Moses happens to be his mom. His mom now is living in a great place. His mom now is living in a great position. His mom now is getting to take care of her son without anyone knowing that it's her son. Watch this. Ah, isn't God's providence, isn't God covering, isn't God's grace, isn't God's mercy uh, something to marvel at? Here it is now, Moses is placed in a basket, uh, but his mother has been strategically placed to take care of him in a place of safety. Oh, God. Uh, but Moses thinks, watch this, and Moses feels as though, watch this, if it wasn't for God's intervention, I would have been raised by someone I didn't even know. So he has some emotional scars and wounds since his conception, since his birth that he is still upset about. And Moses, now as an adult, he is still reflecting on things that happened to him in his younger days that are now manifesting themselves in his older days. Not only did Moses have to endure, watch this, being stripped of the Nile, but Moses came out of his house one day and when Moses came out of his house, he saw the Egyptian and the Hebrew fighting and when he saw him fighting, one killed the other and Moses got upset about it. Watch this, watch this. And this is where we start to get to the crux of who Moses is and why he conducts himself the way he conducts himself, friends. I need somebody to talk back to me on Facebook Live and said, I have a story uh, for being upset. I'm not just upset because of something someone said. I'm not upset because of something someone did. I'm not upset because of someone cutting me off this uh, yesterday when I was going to the mall. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me on Saturday. I'm not upset, watch this, when I was going out to eat and the waitress brought me there. I'm not upset because of any minimal thing. I'm not upset because of a small thing, but I'm upset because there's some things I've been through in life. I wish I had somebody on Facebook Live this Sunday that would talk back to Pastor C and say, Pastor, I have been through some things that if I had time to tell you on Facebook Live, you would have to pass me the bike and let me preach this Sunday morning because I'm upset over things that went wrong in my life. I'm upset because of people who I thought I could count on who disappointed me. I'm upset because the people I've helped walked and went, walked away and turned their back on me. Is there anybody on Facebook Live that understands and can agree with Moses that sometimes life will hit you and cause you to be upset and to feel as though you're angry but the truth of the matter is you're not angry. You're just upset. Moses now takes matter into his own hands when he sees that the Egyptian, watch this, has just been killed and, and or the Hebrew had just been killed. He takes matters into his own hands and he revises or he, he revisits the situation in the morning and he commits murder. So now watch this. Moses now has an anger issue because he kills a man. Moses now is frustrated and upset because he has a life or a childhood, or excuse me, he, he has a situation at birth where he He's put in a basket and stripped of the knife. So he has no real relationship with his father and his mother. He has no real relationship uh, with anybody other than his brother and his sister. And watch this. And now y'all ain't catching me. I need y'all to catch me on Facebook Live this Sunday. And now he has to deal with the trauma. What are you talk? What are you talking about, Pastor Girls? Oh, did y'all forget that your boy was in the trigger series? I'm still in the series. Just one of the triggers that happens in life is getting upset. What is a trigger? I'm glad you asked. A trigger is something that has happened emotionally or physically watch this that has caused you oh god trauma oh god i wish somebody understood what i was talking about something that has happened in the past uh, that has caused you either emotional or physical trauma when you think about it the response is traumatic so moses now as an adult he's struggling because although he's older he is still dealing with the issues that he never addressed as a child watch this i want to talk to about 10 of y'all that would talk back to me be honest on this sunday morning you are not dealing with stuff watch this that are presently causing you pain you are not dealing with stuff on this sunday morning that presently has you feeling like a failure it's the things that have gone undressed for on unaddressed for so long uh, that has you feeling upset can i submit some to you on this Sunday morning. I promise I'm going to get to my point to let y'all go. 
but can I submit to you that you are probably upset about stuff, watch this, that no longer even has relevancy in your life? Can I submit to you, my brothers and my sisters, who are on Facebook Live, to the 30 or 40 of y'all that are watching live right now, who are invite liking and sharing, can I submit to you that you are probably upset about something that should have been addressed a long time ago, but because it has gone unaddressed, now it has become an issue in your life. So Moses has all types of reasons to be upset. First of all, he's called by God and he does not want to respond to the call. He's called by God, watch this, because he does not want to be used by God, but, but, but he's chosen of God. And some of us are frustrated because we're angry that God has anointed us, watch this, but we don't want to have to go through the process of being anointed. God has chosen us, but we don't want to have to go through the process of being the chosen one. So Moses didn't even ask for this position. If anything, our boy Moses was trying to get anybody else to take it. And God said, what I'm going to do for you, Moses, I'm going to make sure that I allow your brother to come with you. Oh, God. And Moses said, well, Lord, I stutter. I ain't got it all together. I still got some issues. I can imagine every excuse Moses could have gave, he gave. Oh, God. I need somebody to talk to you, boy. I said every excuse Moses could have gave. And that's just like some of us. When, when we are upset, we try to give God every excuse we can give him not to do what it is he's asking us. Isn't it God funny? Because God will ask us to do stuff for the people who have made us the most upset. Oh God, if I had time to run around the church with y'all today, I wish five of y'all were here. Y'all can help me preach this. But watch this, watch this. Moses is upset uh, because there's a mandate on his life to help people when I don't even think Moses was a people person. So 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 point number one, watch this. Moses, you 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 taught us something. What did you teach us, Moses? Uh, can I tell the K1 family what you taught us? Moses taught us point number one. Watch this. He says, Don't allow your anger, oh God, to lead to aggravated disobedience. Moses now, because he has an anger issue, because he's upset. Watch this. There's a difference between being upset. We understand that being upset is an emotional disturbance. We understand that anger uh, is the behavior of being upset. Uh, it's the action. It's the response of the traumatic experience. Anger is one of those one of those symptoms that come from triggers, and this is it's, it's Moses' response. He's angry. That's why he hits the rock. That's why he's frustrated and he smokes the rock twice. That's why he's angry with the people because he's upset. Watch this. And I need y'all to catch something. When you are upset, you cannot allow your anger to lead to aggravated disobedience. He didn't just hit the rock once, but Moses hits the rock twice because this is symbolic of him. Watch this. Watch this. Showing us how upset he is and the act of disobedience. And it gets God's attention. And so much so that now God becomes angry. I want to talk to some folk today. That you can be so frustrated. And you can be so upset. That you are on the verge of committing disobedient actions towards the Father. And I want to tell you something. It's not worth it. I need somebody to type in the type box right now. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's just not worth it. It's you're not worth I need somebody to talk to you. Boy, I'm preaching kind of hard. And it's kind of hot. Uh, I said... I need somebody to understand that getting aggravated with folks should not cause you to become disobedient to the Father because they're going to cost you more than they're worth. Oh, God. That's tweetable. That's Instagramable. I said I'm going to say it again, rather. You can't allow people who aren't worth it to cost you everything. Uh, it's not worth it in this season of your life. You have to learn that sometimes people are going to be people no matter how good you are to them. Oh, so Moses lets us know. Uh, you can't allow. You can't allow. You can't allow your anger to lead to aggravated disobedience. Watch this. Well, Moses, how did you get to this point? He said, because I had built up anger, which becomes full-blown rage. I want to talk to some folk that you've been angry with your mother. You've been angry with your father. You've been angry with, angry with your childhood. You've been angry with some stuff in your past, your baby mama, your baby daddy. You've been angry with the way life has treated you. You're angry with the system. Ah, and now, because you have refused to address your anger, oh God, now it has become built up rage. So now, the first chance you get to take it out on someone, it's going to be 
years and years and years of frustration. So Moses, just like us, he's saying, I'm upset. I need somebody to high five me with a heart and a thumb. Y'all know how we work it on Facebook Live on Sunday mornings. I said heart and thumbs. I need somebody to say, Pastor, you are preaching to me. I'm upset. I'm frustrated. I'm aggravated. And if someone don't help me with this situation, uh, by this time next Sunday, oh God, I might have a full-blown rage attack. Oh, who am I talking to that would preach back to me and say, Pastor, you are talking to me. I need somebody to help me. I need somebody to encourage me that I am better where I am today than everything I've been through in my past and I'm going to make sure that God gets the glory out of my life. So Moses tells us the first thing he tells us. He said, don't allow your anger to lead to aggravated disobedience. The second thing he lets us know. <clears throat> He said, now built up anger becomes full-blown rage when unaddressed. The third thing he tells us, watch this, and he lets us see in this situation, he says, tough times takes a toll on you. I want to encourage someone that you are feeling fatigued and you are feeling tired. You are feeling overwhelmed. You are feeling stressed out because you have gone through a tough time. I wish I had time to pause here and preach it like I felt it because tough times. Times are required tough people uh, because it takes a toll on you. Uh, God, who am I talking to on Facebook Live that understands that tough times start to take a wear on you? You start to wonder who you can trust. You start to wonder who's really for you. You start to wonder how much longer it's going to be and it starts to wear on you and wear on you and wear on you. And you say, if they say one more thing, I'm going to let them have it. If they say one more thing, I'm going to give it to them. If they say one more thing, I'm going to cuss them out because tough times takes a toll on you. So Moses after being in the wilderness with these people for 40 long years when it should not have been this long. Moses after not wanting the job. Moses after not wanting to have to go through everything he went through. It's taking a toll on him. No matter how great you are, tough times will take a toll on you. And Moses now with a rod in his hand and a word in his mouth, he's frustrated and the word that he would decree and declare to us is you can be upset, but it should not cause you to be disobedient. And Moses is upset. And watch this. It's important to understand that when you are upset, it's because something is disturbing you. I want to talk to someone who understands that something <clears throat> is disturbing you. Something is disturbing you. Something is disturbing you. God steps in. Moses, Moses, Aaron, Moses, Aaron. Uh, what's going on here? I told you to speak to the rock, Moses. Uh, but Moses, because he's acting uh, out of disobedience. And Moses, because his rage has now been brought on the scene. Moses, because he could not manage the anger that has been with him throughout the whole process. Watch this. Moses has never had an outburst like this. This is the first time that Moses ever let the people get to this is the first time you remember when God got mad at the people oh God I wish I had somebody and Moses said Lord you got to chill out listen please Lord don't I, he's normal I'm gonna get rid of him Moses I'm gonna get rid of him. and Moses speaks to God and tries to calm God down and now Moses is upset and instead of God trying to talk Moses down God tells Moses Moses you done messed up Moses Moses, Moses, I was trying to show the people. I was trying to sanctify the people. I was trying to show them who I was. I was trying to show them. But because you could not allow, you could not control your anger, and because you could not control your emotions, watch this. The enemy understands, watch this, that you could be triggered now, Moses. So now, Moses, I'm not going to be able to allow you to go to the next season, the next stage with these people, uh, because they'll always be able to hold it. Oh, God. Uh, that's why you have to be careful not to let people see that they're getting to you. That's why you have have to be careful not to let see, see people press your button. That's why you have to be careful not to let people think they're getting the best end of you because if they see that, you become a hindrance. You become someone that they try to take advantage of. God has to make sure and you have to make sure that you stay above uh, the ability of those that are trying, stay above the ability uh, of letting those, watch this, who are trying to make you subject to frustration. And emotional disturbance and breakdown. Moses, Moses, help us. He said the key to fulfillment is faithfulness even when angered. Ah, uh, Moses, Moses, you are almost there. You've been through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Washington, Deuteronomy. You've been through it now, Moses. You are getting ready to get to the promise there. Why would Moses, oh, friends, oh, friends, I'm almost there. I promise I'm almost there. Moses, why would you get so upset? 
when you are on the verge of getting to the promised land, sometimes uh, you can become so upset when you are so close. I wish that somebody would catch that one right there. That's also Instagramable, tweetable, Facebookable, uh, Twitter, I, wherever you want to put it. I don't care. I said sometimes you can be so close, but yet. Uh, the enemy will cause you to become so upset because he understands that if I can get them so upset, it'll back them up from becoming or being so close. Watch this, watch this. So, so my fulfillment, my, my, my achievement, my accomplishment to getting to where it is that God wants me to get to is in my ability to be faithful. Even when I'm upset, I'm going to say it again. I can't fulfill what God has in my life unless I'm faithful. And my faithfulness has to be, watch this, there. Even when I'm tired, I'm upset, I'm angry, I'm hurt, I'm frustrated. I have to be able to maintain my godly character huh, without, my, without my triggers, oh God, uh, taking over the characteristics of that which God has perfected in me. Oh God, I need somebody on Facebook Live this Sunday morning to say, Pastor, you are preaching to me. I'm upset, but I gotta stop. I gotta stop letting the enemy see that I'm upset. Do you not think that Jesus was upset when he was on a cross? But he understood that the fulfillment was greater if he remained faithful to the cause. And Moses was learning this in a process because he had to understand that the fulfillment of the promise was coming through his faithfulness, but he lost sight of the fulfillment because his faith had been watched this. That's why, Jesus, that's why the Bible says, did you not believe me, Moses, in verse number 10 in Aaron 12? He said, did you not believe me when I told you that I would do this great thing for you? Sometimes being upset causes you to become frustrated. Sometimes being upset causes you to lose focus. Sometimes being frustrated, excuse me, sometimes being upset causes you to become distracted and disturbed to the point that you become a hindrance to those that are looking up to you, to those that you are serving. Sometimes being upset causes you to miss out on the very thing you've been trying to get to. Watch this. I got to wrap this thing up. So Moses, Moses, what's being said to you? Moses is being rebuked. Moses is being chastised. Moses is being corrected. What can you teach us? He says, watch this. I'm paraphrasing when I say Moses said. If Moses was here, Moses would say, poor handling of your emotional state. Oh, God. Or poor handling of your emotional practices can cause you to miss out on your promised land. Oh God, I wish I was talking to 20 of y'all that understood that your response is going to determine huh, if you get to your promise. I said, your response is going to determine if you get to your promise. Moses, 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 Moses. God is working a miracle. Moses, you are so close to the promise, yet you wait until now to act out. Who am I talking to? Now, now that you found someone that wants to marry you, now you want to act out? Now that you found a job now you want to act out now that your credit is getting better now you want to act out now that you're in church and you're trying to get yourself together now is the time you want to act out this is what Moses is struggling with he finally is seeing the manifestation of everything God said he was going to do and now Moses wants to get upset I want to talk to about 50 y'all right now you are on the verge of seeing the manifestation of what God is showing you and now you're allowing the thing that has upset you to bring about anger, oh God. And now because of anger, you are acting in a sense of disobedience and you are doing things that God is saying, I can't afford for you to do because it is too costly. I need somebody to shout on Facebook Live today and this Sunday. Come on, talk back to me. Uh, help me on Sunday. I need help, y'all. I need help. I need help. I said somebody needs to understand it's too Costly. Moses is letting us know. Moses is saying, listen, poor handling, poor handling of your emotional practices uh, can cause you to miss your promised land. I want to talk to some folk. No one's worth it. I need somebody to shout. They ain't worth it. They ain't worth it. They ain't worth it. Nobody that hurt me in my past is worth my future. No, they're not worth it. Come on, talk back to me. Facebook Live on this Sunday. I said, they're not worth it. They're just not worth it. They're not worth it. Moses! Oh, shout. Got top. Oh, Jonathan, something soft. Watch this. Huh? Oh, God. Oh, God. Watch this. Moses, what's going on? He said, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I, I keep trying to lead them, but, but, but they always got something to complain about. I, I keep trying to get them to the place of trusting Jehovah Jireh, trusting Jehovah Rapha, Siki, Johi, Manah. I try to keep getting them to this place, but it seems like they won't listen. I want to ask you today, are you one of them or are you a Moses? 
Are you a person who's upset? Are you the person that's causing your leader to be upset? Oh, God, you don't want to talk back to your boy today. That's cool. We still friends. I still love you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm still going to dap you. I'm still going to give you a hearts and a thumbs when I see you on Facebook Live. Or when I see you on Facebook, rather like you do when you see me on Facebook Live. But I'm asking you a question today. Are you upset? Or are you the reason why? Ah, oh, God, the person is upset. Moses talked to us. Moses said, I'm upset because no matter how much I do with a job that I did not ask for, uh, it's never good enough. Oh, God. Oh, God. Is there anybody on Facebook Live that understands that sometimes, no matter what you do, Sheke, Shabbat, no matter what you do and no, no matter how much you do and who you do it for, it's never enough. Moses is upset because every time God does something, he's not even upset with the people. Oh, oh, God, because of what God has not done, he's upset with the people because of their lack of appreciation for everything that God has done. But yet and still, God is angry with Moses. Because Moses, I chose you because I knew you had qualities in you. And friends, there's something about you that God chose you to go through this because you had qualities that nobody else in your family had. Watch this. Why did not God, why did God not choose Aaron? Oh, God. I can imagine that Moses is spilling something because uh, this is the chapter 20. We're talking about chapter 20 where Miriam, his sister, has died. Moses is in emotional distress right now. Moses is in a breaking point. Moses is at a point in his life where he's almost there, but he's feeling the weight of the glory. He's feeling the weight and the pressure of everything that has been placed upon him that he didn't ask for. He's feeling the pressure of the people. He's hearing the complaints of the people, but he's seeing the miracles of God and that's just like you and I we are seeing God's provision we are seeing God work ways we are seeing God do it in our life but yet it seems as though it's getting more difficult it seems as though that the people in our lives are becoming more complicated it seems as though the people that we are helping are coming becoming more unappreciative so Moses is upset he doesn't want to talk to anyone he doesn't want to speak about it he's frustrated and I know there's somebody watching me right now. You're saying, Pastor Curtis, if I could just throw in the towel, I'll never go back to that job. Pastor Curtis, if I could just leave this house, I'll never go back to that marriage. Pastor Curtis, the truth of the matter is, I'm so upset that I just want to pack my bags and run and never look back. And can I be honest with you? It's okay to be upset. <laughs> but make sure in your state of being upset, you don't allow your upset state to become a state of anger. Which causes you to become disobedient in the pro disobedient in the process. Moses help us. He says, watch this. Moses says, reflecting back now, many people aren't angry or upset. Ah, oh, friends, I'm I'm gonna wrap this all up now. Moses said, many people aren't angry or upset. But Moses says, many people, many people are just hurting. Or they're not whole. Moses says, I can tell you from first-hand experience that I was so upset in Numbers chapter 20 because of what happened in Exodus. I was so upset at my moment of success because my moments of secret frustration. Can I submit something to you that you are on the verge of some of the greatest successes in your life? But if you don't handle your private frustrations, oh God, oh God, if I had time to preach on that today, I would, but I can't. I just want to stay on topic of being upset today. But Moses says you can experience public success once you defeat your private frustrations. And Moses is frustrated. Moses, Moses is frustrated because he's leading people that he didn't break their job to keep playing, that he didn't want to lead. He's encouraging people when he needs to be encouraged. He's helping people out when he needs to be helped out himself. And what do you do, friends? Who am I talking to today when you say, Pastor C, I'm upset. I'm not angry. I don't want to be no, I don't want to be violent with all this injustice that's going on around us just this week. I'm upset. My job ain't calling me back. I can't get an interview. I got some stuff going on in my life with my health. I'm upset. I serve God. I do everything that I know to do. And what happens instead of me getting to my promised land? It seems like the people that are ungrateful get there. Oh, God. 
But me who have served him, me who has done my best, it seems like one mistake has cost me everything. Friends, I want to submit to you as I get ready to bring this series to a conclusion. The enemy will always try to use your triggers to trick you. I'm going to say it again. Do not respond to your triggers because it's just a trick of the enemy. Friends, you are so close ah, to your promised land. You are so close to the land filled with milk and honey. Do not allow people who are not a part of your future ha, to make you lose focus. Because if they can get you off your focus, who am I talking to on Facebook Live this Sunday morning? I said if they can get you ha, to lose your focus, then you'll lose your faithfulness. And if you lose your faithfulness, we'll see your frustrations. And once we see your frustrations, we'll never see you fulfill the plans in the manifestations of God for your life. Friends, I'm talking to you today. I'm talking to you with tears in your eyes. I'm talking to you right now. You're broken. I'm talking to you because you said, you know what, Pastor? I was raised in foster care. I was adopted. I don't know my biological parents. Why would God choose me? Why would he choose me to raise these kids that are unappreciative? All I wanted to do is be a better parent to them than I had for myself. Pastor, I got myself in some trouble. Yes, I've been incarcerated, but I'm rehabilitated. I'm not the person, but I can't get a job because of something I did 20 years ago. Pastor, I still drink, I still smoke. I'm trying to get it together, but I'm upset. I'm self-medicating because I'm upset. I stand with you today, my brother. I stand with you today, my sister. I come to let you know that whatever it is, that has you feeling like you can't break this heaviness, this spirit of being upset, this emotional disturbance today in Jesus' name, today, today, today in Jesus' name, today in Jesus' name is being broken. I speak hope back into your future. I speak life back into your situation. I decree and I declare today that everything that God said he was going to do, it shall come. He says to Moses as I close, he said, Moses, now because of your action, Aaron, now because your action, watch this, Moses wasn't there when he came down from the mountain and they were having an orgy with all types of sex. Aaron was, but look, he didn't disqualify Aaron over his mistake, but Moses now is frustrated. He's upset because of how they're treating God. And because he disobeys God, he's disqualified. Other people can get away, friends, but because of the call that's on your life, that's why you can't get away with nothing. That's why God only lets you go but so far. Because he has something great for you. Oh, uh, so Moses is not allowed to go in to the promised land. Although we find out later that Moses is now caught up with, with, with God. And we hear about him being on a cloud. I'm sure that he saw everything from the cloud. Friends, God is getting ready to remove you from people who do not appreciate the call that's on your life. I gotta get out of here. Don't allow them to continue to pull your triggers and get you to respond from a place of emotional pain and trauma or physical pain and trauma from past experiences. You can talk about it. You don't have to commit suicide spiritually or physically. You don't have to run from it and hide underneath anybody's sycamore tree. No, friends. No. You have to understand, as I said on Wednesday night, midweek service, it's not even you anymore. It's experiences that you have gone through that have caused you to relive some of the most traumatic experiences you have ever incurred, occurred, incurred. Friends, I close by telling you, no matter what it was and who did it, you can overcome it. The best days of your life are still ahead of you. I want you right now, right now, right now. Don't wait. I, don't, I see you with tears in your eyes, and I see you saying, Pastor, you preaching to me. I needed this word, but I need you. I need every person that needs prayer. Every person that felt like giving up because you were upset, you were tired, you felt like Moses, and you hit something that you should have been speaking to. 
I need you to call 203 right now, 203-574. Come on, it's on the screen right now. Yes, yes, that's the number, 203-574-2636. We have prayer warriors waiting right now. Call, call, call. Yes, you, you, I'm talking to you. Call right now, call, call, yes. I'm going to say it again, 203-574, it's on the screen, 2636. Yes, yes, yes. The Spirit of the Lord wants to touch you today. We're not going to leave this series without praying for every person that needs prayer. The triggers will not be pulled in your life anymore. You will get to your promised land. Oh God, who on Facebook Live this Sunday morning is calling in right now or thinking about, oh pastor, you preached to me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it this Sunday. I'm gonna do it right now, right now. Friends, I'm excited. Also on the screen, you'll see if you say, you know what? I know we gotta transition kinda quickly. I want y'all to first, I want y'all to, I want y'all to see the links. See the links? Yes, put the links, thank you. To put in links on the screen. Thank you. Watch this. Follow us. I want to come in contact with you. And if at any point you say, you know what, I don't belong to a church or I'm looking for a church, I want to become your virtual pastor. Yes, I said that. I want to be your pastor. With all of your flaws, with all of your failures, with all of your shortcomings, I still see greatness, friends. Yes, I see greatness in you. So follow us. As you'll see on the links, yes. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Follow us, and I'll make sure we follow you back. Friends, also, on the bottom of the screen, it's been scrolling. At any time during our service, if you want to give, we have platforms to give. Remember, even though we're not gathering in the house of the Lord, we still have obligations. So I hope and pray that something I've said today has blessed your life in a way that you'll understand that it's okay to be upset. It's just an emotional disturbance. But it's not okay to allow your emotional disturbance to become anger to the point where it causes you to become disobedient. Father, I pray for every person who has not called the prayer line but desires prayer, that you meet them at the point of frustration, at the point of fatigue, Meet them wherever they are. I pray now, especially when they're upon their life, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Let them know, oh God, that you have a call on their life. Let them know, oh God, that you are a deliverer, that you are a keeper. Bless them now, God. Keep them now, God. Save them now, deliver them now, God. This is my prayer. Remember, y'all, in Jesus' name, meet me back here, or meet me back on Facebook Live, Wednesday night, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is your boy, Pastor C. Until next time, peace. Hey friends, I'm so excited that you took the time out to be with us out of your day. Listen, I want you to meet me back here, same time, same place, so we can do it all over again. Remember, church would not be church without you, and you make my day a whole lot better because you're in it. This is your boy, Pastor Curtis. Until next time, peace.